everyone, I'm Rita Mienst and I'm back with Neuroscience Curiosities. Today we'll get back on track with the case of Phineas Gage and we will approach the scientific explanation of the question. Back in 1848, there was a pretty ordinary man who had an extraordinary accident. You've probably heard of Gage, the railroad foreman who had a one meter iron bar blasted through his skull. The details are pretty terrific, think bits of brain and skull going everywhere, Miraculously, Gage survived the accident and remained cautious during all the process. He recuperated well and could still talk and walk. He appeared normal, but his friends would say Gage was no longer Gage. He turned out rude, impatient and lost his capacity to behave socially. As you know, our body is composed of a complex nervous system. The nervous system is the part of an animal that coordinates its actions by transmitting signals to and from different parts of the body. In humans, it consists of two main parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The CNS consists of the brain and spinal cord, while the PNS consists mainly of nerves, which are enclosed bundles of long fibers or axons that connect the CNS to every other part of the body. The brain consists of four principal parts, brainstem, cerebrum, cerebrellum and diencephalon. The cerebrum, consisting of the cerebral hemispheres, forms the largest part of the brain and is situated above all the other brain structures. Each hemisphere is divided into four main lobes, according to anatomic areas, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe and occipital lobe. Each lobe is associated with one or two specialized functions, though there is some functional overlap between them. Each anatomic area is divided into functional areas, among them the speech area, the primary and secondary visual area or the emotional area, for example. The iron bar affected Gage's frontal lobes of the brain, responsible for commanding mental functions as social behaviour, planning and decision making. And that's the most rational explanation for Phineas Gage's disorder. In sum, our brain is divided into specialized areas, which command different functions. Phineas was affected in a specific area that is responsible for mental functions and not any other area. Thus, it is understandable that post-accident, the foreman has changed behavior but hasn't experienced any other problem as walking or talking. Seems clear now, right? Hope you like it! Bibliography is in the description, leave some feedback below. If you haven't visited Instituto Português de Administração e Marketing Interpersonal Skills blog, it's time to do it. You can find there various possible interests and you can learn also more about this case. See you next time!